Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> Hello everyone, Atomic Dudman here, and I'd like to welcome you back to another Nuclear News Segment, where I keep you updated on all the latest gaming news. Today, I will be reporting that Sony is being sued, and how it could benefit gamers, that Assassin's Creed may ditch the RPG-style open world, and lastly, that Ubisoft is going free-to-play with their future projects of video games. Also, in my latest video, it shows that 91.6% of you are not yet subscribed. If you could, please click that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out a lot. I try to upload at least one time per week, so if you want to be notified when a new video goes live, hit that small little bell icon down below. Also, I do stream on Twitch every single Friday if you want to come chill and chat with me. With all that being said, kick back, relax, and enjoy today's show. As of right now, in 2021, Sony is in some deep deep legal trouble as of right now. They are facing a class action lawsuit from restricting digital downloads for certain PlayStation exclusive titles on the PlayStation Store. This comes two months after a class action lawsuit was filed over controller drift in which players complained that their $70 accessories were malfunctioning only months after their purchases. Now, Sony has found itself in even more legal trouble for limiting the online purchases of select PlayStation exclusives to the PlayStation Store, which retail Retailers and consumers claim unfairly monopolizes the digital game's prices. While charging more money for games is not technically a crime, eliminating competition so that consumers have no choice but to buy some games at a higher price could very well be. However, there may be more to the story that meets the eye, especially if Sony built PlayStation Store exclusivity clauses into contracts willingly signed by publishers and developers, thus forcing games to pay as much as 175% more for downloadable games than for the physical copy may not land Sony in financial trouble ultimately, but it's not good for business looking from the outside. Sony's lawyers are going to have a hard time and a field day with the multiple class action lawsuits they are going to be facing. In other news, Assassin's Creed games may be ditching the RPG open world like style of games, going back to more traditional gameplay of the Ezio trilogy. A possibly scrapped Assassin's Creed game centered on King Richard I of England may have seen the franchise abandon its open world model in favor of returning to the first AC's entries, Third Crusade setting. Many fans of the brand continue to hope that Ubisoft will eventually focus its efforts on two key elements, a remake for the original Assassin's Creed and a break from the open world design that took over during the Ezio days. The Assassin's Creed brand returning to the Third Crusade roots might not be a new rumor by any means, but some time ago a notable leaker claimed that the original Assassin's Creed hero, Altair, will once again play an integral part in an overarching narrative. This character's potential resurgence would most certainly delight fans who haven't seen Altair in any substantial fashion since his flashback appearances in 2011's Assassin's Creed Revelations. Another bit of speculation suggests this rumored Altair starring project, if it indeed exists, may do away with open world game design in favor of something more linear. Assassin's Creed leaker Jonathan recently spoke with a YouTuber Carol, relayed by comicbook.com, to expand further on the aforementioned rumors. According to Jonathan, Ubisoft Sophia served as a lead developer on this project, but the team's current work on AC Valhalla DLC suggests Ubisoft may have scrapped this project entirely. Jonathan still spoke about the alleged title extensively, though alleging that the open world model would have been sidelined to focus on a semi-linear adventure with each game level constituting its own hub world. Allegedly, players were to assume the role of King Richard's bodyguard in a story emphasizing the Third Crusade between 1889 and 1192. 
and Richard's return to England. Moreover, on this subject matter, the leaker hinted at a female assassin taking center stage as well, courtesy of a narrative told from two perspectives, such as the pathways in Assassin's Creed Odysseys of Alexios and Cassandra. As I always like to tell my viewers here, always take all aforementioned information of this leak with a grain of salt, as it's not mentioned where the Assassin's Creed franchise will be headed next after Assassin's Creed Valhalla. As we're currently talking about Ubisoft games, let's talk about Ubisoft's huge announcement that they just released today. Ubisoft just announced that they're going to go free to play with their games. Oh, but don't worry, it doesn't mean they're going to stop producing games such as Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. They will continue to still deliver these single player experiences to players, but there will just be two of them a year, maybe, instead of four AAA releases that they usually put out yearly. An Ubisoft spokesperson goes on to state, We are excited to be investing more in free-to-play experiences. However, we want to clarify that this does not mean reducing our AAA offering. Our aim is to continue to deliver premium experiences to players, such as Far Cry 6, Rambo 6 Quarantine, Riders Republic, and Skull and Bones to name a few, while also expanding our free-to-play portfolio and strengthening our brand to reach even more players. <laughs> okay, this is actually not the best of news for gamers because that means Ubisoft is jumping on the EA bandwagon to create more live service game experience to make some quick cash on the side. It shows that Ubisoft is going to attempt to make free-to-play titles that are reminiscent of Call of Duty Warzone, deeming it as a, and I quote, good reference model to base their newer games off of. Ubisoft is not going to be a trendsetter such as Fortnite, PUBG, or COD Warzone. No, they're going to chase a trend that is already oversaturated in a market of free-to-play games. The main issue with Ubisoft games is that their games are fun to play at the time of release. I personally don't ever truly see anyone go back to these titles from Ubisoft. People move on fairly quickly from Ubisoft titles, so it really makes me wonder, as a gamer, how are they going to offer a substantial and unique live service title that keeps giving players more and more, retaining a returning player base? Ubisoft has already been a greedy publisher when it comes down to microtransactions. Take a look at how they have these time saver packs and their single player experiences to reduce the grind that they intentionally, intentionally put into the games to sway gamers to pay to play to save some of their time. Ubisoft's first attempt to go free to play will be Tom Clancy's The Division Heartlands that is set to launch sometime late 2021 or early 2022 and also have a Division game for mobile launching alongside it as well. Will this decision be Ubisoft's financial success or financial travesty? Only time will truly tell for this money-hungry company that so resembles and is reminiscent of Electronic Arts. Great news! I've crafted an official Discord for this channel, and also, due to this channel not being monetized, I've created a Patreon if you would love to further support me. Both links are down in the description below if you are interested. If you enjoyed today's show, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I personally would really love to see you around the channel more often. What do you think about PlayStation games potentially dropping in price because of these civil lawsuits? Or Assassin's Creed going back to the roots once again? How do you personally feel, as a gamer, about Ubisoft games going free to play and becoming filled with microtransactions? Let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure to hit that tiny little itty bitty bell icon to get notified once a week when a new video does go live. And also be sure to check out my Twitch because I do stream on every Friday if you want to come and chill and chat with me. And please do be sure to stay tuned for another nuclear news segment. I really do hope all you enjoyed your time with me, as I always do with you, your host, Atomic Dudman, and until next time.